And one mic. I'm C Mark. I'm John Mark. Over the last couple of podcasts, we've been talking about the importance of getting an accident report after an accident to document the cause of the accident. We've been talking about the importance of seeking medical treatment to make sure the insurance company pays you a fair amount of money for your claim. If you don't get medical treatment, you're not hurt. Very important to get medical treatment. And today we're going to touch on okay, you have an accident report, you have your medical bills. Now, you want to get them paid and get fair compensation for your injuries. Is it time to hire a lawyer? Before we move on to that, Mark, one thing that happened this week uh, uh, with a client that had called in, um, she had been in an accident. Uh, within 30 minutes of the accident, after she'd been in the accident, um, the police officer came to the scene, did not prepare a report, but because he asked her, are you hurt? And she said, I'm not sure. And she left the scene. Within 30 minutes, she was on her way to the hospital. Okay. The reason I point that out is is a lot of times people aren't sure because right. their adrenaline flowing, they, right. they've they've had this right. traumatic event, and you know, they're just they're not sure. Yeah. And so if you're unsure, it's important to treat it as if you're injured because that very thing. Right. Is now she does not have an accident report. She has been to the emergency room. They did all the proper things at the scene, fortunately, where they right. did exchange information. But I asked her about the injury heading to the, the hospital, mm -hmm. and she said that she wasn't sure, but 30 minutes after, she knew she was hurt. So really and truly, it's important. If you're not sure, you better make sure. Right. Because right. this could have been a disaster, yeah. but, but it turned out where it was okay yeah. because she did get all the proper right. So now, keep now, that in mind. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every car wreck requires a lawyer. Every car wreck does not require a lawyer. If it's only property damage, there's no need to lawyer up and pay a lawyer. That's correct. Uh, but if you have personal injuries, if you have a medical bill that you want to hold the responsible party accountable for your medical bill, you're going to lawyer up. And it's been our experience when we get phone calls from potential clients, they have been dissed by the insurance company. They've been disrespected or disre disregarded. Right. Right. Disrespected because they're talked down to by the insurance adjuster that are, that's saying you're not really hurt because of the property damage or disregarded because they're not returning phone calls. And, and, and the other thing, Mark, is they're disregarded oftentimes because the adjuster does not believe they're injured. Right. And so he, he, they're going to basically yeah. ignore you. Yeah. And so when that happens, it's very, very important. You know you've been injured. You know you've had it. You've got pain in your neck or pain in your back. You know you've been in the emergency room, but yet they're going to treat you as if, yes. well, there is no way it's, you're injured. You know, and it's just that sometimes it's just their tone of voice that they use, right. that they just talk right. down to our clients. And uh, I've always felt like if the insurance company would send their employees to a Dale Carnegie class about how to win friends and influence people and be more polite and cordial, we might be out of business because a lot of well, times when well, people well, start certainly, certainly they may not hire us early enough. Yeah, they probably eventually would once they realize, oh, well, well maybe this insurance company is being sweet yeah. to me because right. they are going to underpay me or they well, are not yes. going to take right. care of me properly. But you're exactly right. If, if they treated people yeah. with, with more respect, and if they did take their injury seriously, when they, they stab them fair you in the gut with their knife, they got a smile on their face, yes. you know, because they're trying to save money for their insurance company. So you reach a point where you decide, I've got to find a lawyer. Now, the first place where you want to find a lawyer, in my opinion, is friends and family. Exactly right. Ask around your friends and family, people at church, you know, I'm involved in a car accident, I need a lawyer. Do you have any suggestions, any names? any firms and really that's 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 where you want to start at is people that you know people that you trust and love giving you a name of someone that you can that's call. right because what those people will tell you they will tell you somebody that is good to hire they will also tell you people truthfully who to avoid yes so you you get a real honest opinion from friends and family 
But that's not the only place that no. you should consider uh -huh. looking for no. a lawyer. No. Because sometimes uh, you may have a, a friend or a family member that has had a lawyer, but suppose it was a business type deal right. or a real, real right. estate type deal. Right. And, and that lawyer may not be familiar enough with the process to be one that you should really consider. So what do you do if, if the, the, the friend or family well, has referred you to that sort of lawyer and you really need a lawyer that handles injury cases? Well, it's so easy nowadays to find any sort of service, be it medical, legal, car service. I mean, you Google. You Google. In my, in my opinion, you Google car wreck lawyer Chattanooga, car wreck attorney Chattanooga, and pick the law firm or the lawyer with the most five-star reviews. Right. Simply that. You know, read the five-star reviews. They are real. Yeah. And they're by, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, give five-star reviews and pick the law firm with the most five-star reviews. Now, I think that, is, that is, is a very, very good place to start. But one thing you have to be careful of when you do Google, because what we have now is you do have a lot of lawyers that may not be local lawyers, that are actually Great trolling, for, trolling for trolling for the big case. They, don't, they may not necessarily Great care point. about about your case, but they're trolling for things. So yeah. you may see a, a lawyer with a lot of five star reviews, yeah. but read the fine print. See where that lawyer really is. See if they really are from local. your area. Local, local, local. 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 And when we say local, speak. you should at least make sure if you're in the Chattanooga area, somewhere around the Chattanooga area, somewhere around the North yeah, Georgia. Right. You, you should make yeah. certain that they know yeah. the flavor. Uh, of this area, they know the environment. Absolutely. You want a local lawyer with the most five-star reviews. Make sure that the lawyer is with, within this geographic center where you are and not out of Atlanta. And when you call the lawyer that you decided, pick two or three with the most five-star reviews, you know, call their offices. Right. Are their phones answered quickly in a courteous and professional manner? Uh, do they take down your information and then hand you off to a lawyer instead of a case file manager? Case file manager is code for not a lawyer, okay? Right. So not a paralegal, well, what, case file manager. And, 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 and that is a model that, that a lot of firms use. Now, there's a difference if you're working with a case file uh, manager and a lawyer. But one of the things I think is very important is when you do or, or you are selecting the, the law firm, are you actually going to meet with the lawyer? Right. A lot of these firms nowadays, you don't meet with a the lawyer. They'll no. send, you know, somebody to your house that's a runner. They'll they, you go down to their 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 office and you right. meet with, you know, a paralegal. Not it's not disparaging the paralegals, but there are some problems with that because guess what? Yeah. If you're not meeting with a lawyer, mm -hmm. that person you're meeting with, they cannot give you legal advice. No. No. So if you're, that's what you're actually going to do. Right. You're looking for representation yeah. and legal advice. Well, and if you're not, if well, you're not, if you're not meeting yeah. with a lawyer, well, the, the advice they're giving you is is not worth anything. You're paying an attorney's fee. It's an attorney fee. It's a lawyer fee. It's not a paralegal fee. It's not a case file manager fee. It's a lawyer fee. You're paying for your lawyer, so you need a lawyer that you're paying for. And 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 uh, lawyers like us, we 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 charge in a different way. You know, uh, you 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 might have. You might know a business lawyer, and a, and a business lawyer is different than, than, than what we do, a trial lawyer. We have a contingent fee basis. And what is a contingent fee, John Mark? Well, the, the way we handle cases is we're not going to get paid unless there's a recovery. We don't get paid unless you get paid. And my wife enjoys it when I get paid. Absolutely. So, you know, the, 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 the contingency fee is a mechanism that came about centuries ago right it allows the individual that cannot pay that hourly rate cannot pay that that big retainer fee mm -hmm. and it allows that person to be represented represented on a contingency basis right. meaning the payment of that attorney's fee is contingent upon there being a recovery and usually that's a percentage and the percentage varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction here in Chattanooga, the typical fee is one third. However, if you hire a lawyer out of Atlanta, that fee is forty percent. You also see that out of the ones that come out of Birmingham. Yeah, forty percent out of out of Alabama and out of Georgia. So be, you keep that in mind because that's money coming out of your pocket. That uh, one third attorney fee. Also, John Mark and I have been doing this for thirty four years. Okay, and I, I I can swear to you, I can swear to you. The clients always make the clients always have the biggest check 
exactly. walking out of this office. Exactly. They always make they all, their their check is their check is always bigger than the attorney fee. Always, we will guarantee never, it. We will never take more oh. than the client. The client's been the one that's that's been injured. Yeah, they're they're the ones that have I, been through the ringer. Right, they're the ones right. that are going to get a check. Yeah. that's going to be more than I. And, and 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 I have talked to clients that were not our clients and talked to them about the the breakdown of their settlement sheets. You know, and it's amazing. With a twenty-five thousand dollars settlement, they're walking away with four thousand dollars, and the attorney is getting their full forty percent fee, with all these added on expenses, and the client walks away with four thousand dollars. Yeah, you make a good point because there's one thing that that people that are out there that are being represented by other attorneys make certain that you ask for a disbursement sheet, or yes. a settlement sheet breakdown right. that shows you where every single penny goes. And you know what? You don't have to ask for that after your case. No, is no, 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 no. Ask your attorney to give yeah, you a proposal but, ahead of time. That's part of our process here. You know, a case is not settled at Warren and Griffin until that disbursement sheet is approved by the client. Exactly right. And and, and, and if, if I email a disbursement sheet to my client, they we go over it line by line. Exactly. And they understand the net recovery which is always more than my attorney fee, you know, and they sign off on it. So there's no surprises. There's no surprises when the settlement check comes in. It's, it's very important that, that you see that before you say yes. Yeah. I mean, right. it's very important. That, that's something to consider. Now, you know what? Uh, I made a comment earlier about, about attorneys and paralegals. Paralegals do a great job at answering routine questions. Right. It's more about the process. Of, of what happens when they retain Warren and Griffin uh, to represent them in a car wreck. What I'm talking about is when you need to sit down and ask for legal advice about how to handle something, you better be in a room with your attorney. Right. Not with just somebody that's not a licensed right. lawyer. Right. So anyway, those things are, are, are things that really and truly should be considered when you are hiring a lawyer to handle your local car wreck. This has been two marks and one mic. Mm. Yeah.